Hi, so I thought today, um, you'll have seen often in my posts, I talk about sensory learning or I hashtag sensory learning. Um, and I thought I would explain just a little bit more about what that is and why it is so important. So basically it goes right back uh, to the beginning where we are first being formed um, in utero in the womb. And if you go to the last trimester of pregnancy, there are a few things that are happening. The baby's getting bigger, getting fatter, um, the lungs are still developing. But one of the amazing things that's happening is the baby's brain is developing and the ba baby is beginning to learn. So obviously we don't have language yet. So how is the baby learning? Well, the baby's learning through uh, sensory systems and sensory feedback. So what's happening is the baby, baby's body um, concept and body awareness is beginning to form. So there are three main systems, the vestibular system, um, at this point and the vestibular system is um, uh, your movement system your sort of GPS about your body's position so baby's inverted um, generally and mother's walking and and uh, baby sways and mother's hips so um, that's telling the brain you know this is how you're moving this is how you're moving then there's the proprioceptive system which is the muscles and the joints so as baby presses against the the amniotic sac, the, the womb, um, it, it's like, oh, this is this is where my body's pushing, this is where I start, this is where I finish. And then there's the deep pressure touch. So remember, baby is encased in amniotic fluid, it's warm, there's pressure around it, much like a massage all the time, uh, telling baby, you know, this is this is how you are, this is your positioning, this is your skin. Um, so those are the three main things. So baby has already started to learn. Baby's learning about their body, their body awareness is, is developing, they're learning about this map of who they are, and, and, and where their body starts and ends. Um, and that learning just continues. So obviously once baby's born, um, the visual component becomes greater, the auditory component, they could hear mom's voice in utero and mom's heartbeat, but now they're able, being able to hear things more distinctly. So basically we are primarily sensory learners. From the beginning we are programmed to learn things through our senses. Uh, our senses bring the world to us. Um, and you know, then baby, as baby starts to move, baby can explore, choice comes into it. Um, as baby learns language, language starts developing. But for example, if we take something very simple, like an apple, this is an apple. If you gave this to a baby, they would feel how it feels. It has a certain smell to it, a certain weight to it. It rolls. Um, it has it has it has sensory properties so baby learns this is an apple and mom goes oh look at the apple shall we have apple and baby starts associating the word with um what they have tagged through their sensory systems that this is apple if you gave baby this they would know that it is a ball not an apple so it's the same shape as an apple but it feels different to an apple it smells different to to an apple so already because of their sensory systems there's some discrimination taking place some knowledge about um categorizing things and ordering things um, and then as language develop and cognition develops you could even show baby a, 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 a photograph and baby would know, oh, that's an apple. Now they know it's not an apple, but they can see that it is an apple. Um, so they learn to be able to tell um, that a photograph can represent, so they, that symbolic and representational um, cognition starts, starts developing. And then once they've got that the photograph is an apple, they might even be able to get that a picture is an apple. Now these, these are, it's not always a linear progression and because we're learning so much about what's around us, uh, we can fill in the blanks. So we can sometimes make the leap. So they might be able to make the leap from apple to picture. Um, and if you've discussed pears with them, they might be able to understand if you told them that this is an apple, that this is an apple, and they might be able to create some knowledge about it. But for the fullest, richest experience, it would be to hold the apple. Um, as they get a little bit older, they then learn that this is apple. Um, and then they learn that this is also apple, although they're different. And then they learn that that is apple, but so is that. So you can see all the time, um, the scaffolding of how they learn, it gets more abstract. Um, there are more variables to take and there are more things that they have to consider. So whether it's different fonts or capital letters or pictures or photographs, their understanding is still solid because they understood that this was an apple. They know what it smells like. By the time they get much older, they learn that that's apple, but they know it means something else altogether. So learning, basically we are able, once we have language and cognition, we are able to conceptualize things that we do not have a sensory basis for. But the more of a sensory basis that you give to children, 
the more that they're able to make those leaps. And if you start trying to teach at the top of that mountain of learning, you're really setting the child up for failure. The bigger uh, sensory foundation you give them and the more um, in tune their sensory processing skills are, the easier it is going to be for them to build on that um, in terms of their learning. And that's why we say don't teach letters, don't teach numbers yet. Make it tangible, make it concrete, make it physical and, and work up from there. So that's just a bit of an idea about sensory learning and why we do it and why as therapists and early childhood development specialists, we really push the sensory learning idea. It's, um, it allows us to really create more tagging around our experiences and makes it a much fuller, um, more comprehensive idea uh, for the child about what it is that they're learning so that they're able to build on that with the more, more abstract concepts. Anyway, so when you doing something with your child, think about how you can make it more sensory, how you can make it more concrete. Uh, and that's really gonna help them uh, sort of building their knowledge. I hope that's useful. I'm, I'm going to do a follow-up next week um, uh, on this. Uh, so, you know, experiment with this during the week and, and see what you can think of. Um, and then I'll do a follow-up on, on why that collaboration with the child in learning is so important and how they don't just learn on their own. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful week and we'll chat again soon.